Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from Checkit.com and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Uh, I'm hoping that those of you that are viewing this right now, uh, the day after, or actually no, it's still still technically New Year's Day, isn't it? Yep, still, you know, January 1st. Uh, <laughs> Whoever is viewing this right now, hopefully you are uh, not too hungover from celebrating uh, the New Year last night because today's tutorial is going to be pretty freaking sweet. So let's go ahead and check this sucker out. And uh, let's get this full screen for you so you can see its entire beauty. <laughs> All right. So what you are seeing here is this watercolor painting effect. And it's being applied to this like little grunge, a uh, little uh, paper texture with some graininess added to it. And we even got Eli's name off over to the side there. And this overall effect is pretty sweet looking in my personal opinion. And we're going to learn how to make this today. So... Let's get right into the tutorial, all right? <laughs> all right, so let's start off with a nice clean slate here and delete everything. All right, so obviously the first thing you're gonna need is some sort of picture to apply this effect to. If you really want to use the one that I'm using in this tutorial, feel free to ask and I'll put a download link in the description. And uh, another thing you might want to download is the first thing you're going to want to do is make the background behind the your model white. So in this case, uh, you'd basically be masking out the background so that it's only Eli. And I know that some of you aren't exactly that great with this. So if you want the PSD, again, just ask and I'll put the link in the description for you. All right, so let's get going with the actual fun part of this tutorial. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we are going to make a duplicate of our masked layer so that way we have one in the reserve just in case we mess up later. So with that masked layer selected, let's hit Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. And let's turn off the masked layer. And with the masked copy selected, hit the shortcut Control Shift U or Command Shift U to turn that into a black and white layer. And then let's make a new layer between masked and masked copy. And we'll make a new white layer underneath it by hitting Control Backspace or Command Delete if you're on a Mac, assuming you have white as your background color over there. And then we'll just select both of these layers and merge them together with Control E. And then if you want to, you can just rename this to black slash W for black and white. So the next part is to go to your Adjustments tab and make a new Curves Adjustment layer. And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the white slider until a majority of the image is a bright white color. And then we'll just kind of click and drag the middle bar, uh, part of that bar up and to the left to basically lighten up the overall shading of the image. So this is what you're aiming to get. You want most of the image to be white. And then you want these random shades of gray and then the darker areas up over here where the hair is. And basically everything that's dark is going to represent where all of the uh, future watercolors are going to be showing up. So let's go ahead and start bringing in, uh, bringing in some of these watercolors. So let's make a new layer and let's put it into a group by hitting Control G or Command G if you're on a Mac. And if you want to, you can rename this group to watercolor. And let's select layer one. And let's go grab some watercolors. So what I'm going to be using is this uh, Watercolors Volume 2 from Media Militia. And this is 100% free, so all you have to do is go to the website and download it. And you'll have all these wonderful watercolor images here. I mean, look at that. That's just beautiful. <laughs> Man, we, we just found this website today, and oh my gosh, we are in love. Man, great website. So once you've got your choice of watercolors uh, downloaded, let's just start selecting some of these to drag into our document. So I'm going to select all of the ones that kind of had a, uh, a bit of a brush stroke feeling to them. So let's just uh, skip that. We'll grab some of these. Uh, maybe not that one. Let's grab that. And we'll grab those as well just for fun. So once you have all the ones you want to use selected, just drag them on in. And then for each image that shows up, just hit the enter key on your keyboard to really quickly confirm the, the import there. And I have a really large image uh, that I'm working with, so all of these textures look a little dinky, but that's okay, not a big deal. Let's just get through all these. Perfect. 
So once you have all of these imported here, what you're gonna do, uh, let's go ahead and double click properties to minimize that. And we're going to select all of the, the watercolors over here on the side, and we're gonna change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And so that way it gets rid of the white background that you see on uh, the back of the watercolors. And so now let's, let's actually drag this off to the side so that way it's a little bit out of the way. And we're gonna select one of the watercolors, hit Control T or Command T for on a Mac, drag it on over. And in my case, I need to size this up and basically just start positioning this wherever the heck you want that color to be. And so maybe I'll just kind of put it right here on the cheek. Maybe you go to the next one, Control T, size her on up. Uh, maybe we'll flip that around and put it down here and just kind of repeat that. Um, so one thing that you will want to take into consideration is that the more time that you put into deciding where all of these colors go, the better the effect is going to turn out in the end. I mean, right now I'm literally just kind of clicking and dragging to a random spot. And if it fits, I just leave it there. I'm not like going back and tweaking or anything like that. Actually, I don't like that one. So I'm just going to delete it. And so anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that the more time that you put into figuring out where each color goes, the better the overall effect is going to look. So the odds that this is going to look as good as the demo that I showed you are basically slim to none because I used a lot uh, of my time making that look just right. And I think I'm going to have to bring in some more of the... Uh, I'm going to have to delete some of these because there are a couple different uh, watercolor textures that I want to use. Like some of these ones right here where they have this nice little stroke to it. I want to grab a couple more of those so that way I can use them for the the hair on Eli's scalp over there. So I'll have to grab those in a second. This one on the other hand, I know if I flip that, turn it around... I can get that to follow the overall shape of Eli's jaw, which is pretty sweet. So let's get that in there. There we go. And what did I miss over here? Let's grab that. Control T. Uh, maybe I'll put that in the hair to give it a little bit of color. And what's this one over here? There we go. And let's put that on over there. All right, now real quick, let's grab another one of those. Uh, so maybe this one. Oop. Ah, I'm closing everything on accident. Failure. Try this again. Much better. <laughs> okay, so let's turn this to kind of go with the flow of Eli's hair over here. And we'll change that to multiply as well. And we're just going to go ahead and call that good and see how it turns up um, after these next couple of steps here. So once you've got all of these watercolors in a position that looks pretty good, what we're going to do is close up the group on the right-hand side over here. Let's turn off the watercolors for a moment. And we're going to select Curves 1 and hit Control-A on our keyboard or Command-A if you're on a Mac to select the canvas. So what I want to do here is make a copy of everything that I see here, but I also want to make sure that I include the adjustments that are being applied by the curves. But in order to do that, I would either A, have to merge it with the black and white layer and copy that, which I don't want to do because maybe I'll want to come back later and tweak those curves and redo this. Um, or B, I can just copy everything that's visible here with a neat little shortcut that's Control shift c or Command-Shift-C, if, again, if you're on a Mac. And what that shortcut does is it basically copies everything that it sees right now. So everything as it is has been copied to your clipboard. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn back, uh, turn on the watercolor once again. We're going to add a layer mask to it. And then we're going to uh, Alt-click or Option-click the thumbnail for that. So now we're in the mask for the watercolor group. And then we're going to paste with Control-V or Command-V that exact uh, image that we just copied. And so now once that's pasted in, we'll hit Control-I or Command-I to invert that. Then we'll hit Control-D or Command-D to deselect it. And then we'll click back on the black and white layer to go back to it. And then we can just like turn that off, make a new layer make it white, 
and get a good idea of what the watercolor is looking like. So, uh, actually, this isn't looking half bad. I mean, uh, all we need now is a nice little texture to go with it. So, what I was able to find, uh, that's Facebook, let's go, there we go. Uh, what we have here is a nice little texture that I found on Google. And I'll, you can see the link up in here, but I'll give it to you in the uh, description. We'll just right click, copy the image, go back to Photoshop, and then we'll paste it underneath the watercolor group. And then with our transform tool, control T, we can size this on up until it's a proper size. And voila, we've got ourselves a beautiful little texture in the background. So let's go ahead and start making this sucker look a little bit nicer, shall we? Let's select the watercolor group. Let's add a curves adjustment layer above it. Let's give this a nice little set of contrasting by bringing down the darks and bringing back up the lights. And let's go ahead and grab, uh, let's go to my actions and use my deep sea vignette action. And if you want to download my vignettes, just um, there's a link that I can give you in the description or you can go view my video that I've already created about this. So you take your pick on that. And that's looking pretty good, but uh, next up, I want to add a little bit of grit to this entire image. And to do that, let's add a new layer, and we'll call this grit. And for this, what we're going to do is making sure that we have black and white as our foreground and background color. Go to Filter, go to Render, and go to Clouds. And then we'll go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And for this, I use about 60% of the, the noise with a distribution set to Gaussian and monochromatic check marks. If you're using a smaller image, you might use a smaller amount. Just kind of play with that and see what you like, and we'll hit OK. And so now that we've got this, I want to size it up because there's too many visible clouds here. So I'm going to hit Control-T or Command-T, and let's toggle the little chain link between the width and the height, so that way they're always the same percentage. And we'll just change that to 200% on both the width and the height and hit the check mark. And so there we go. We've got this nice set of grit going on. And all we have to do is set that to overlay and then just kind of play with the opacity as we see fit. So I'll probably keep it around maybe 90% and we're looking pretty good. Now I do notice that some of the colors are getting a little harder to see. So we're going to go back to the watercolor group. We're going to change the blend mode from pass through to linear burn. And then we can duplicate that with uh, control J or command J if you're on a Mac. And then I'm going to tone down the opacity just a little bit to around 50. So that way we can see uh, the colors just a little bit better, but it's not like overwhelming, like 100%. <laughs> Okay, so we're off to a good start. Let's start adding in a little bit of text, just so that way there's a little bit of a fill over on this left-hand side. So I'm going to grab my text tool by hitting the letter T. And where do I want to put this? I'll probably put it right above. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it right between the watercolor copy and the curves too. So let's click somewhere and let's type in Eli. And I'm going to size this up. So a nice size, looking good. And the font that I'm using for this is called Typograph Pro, which is a font that comes with one of the DVDs from Video Copilot. Unfortunately, I do not remember <laughs> what DVD that comes with, but this is a pretty cool font. You can use whatever font you want, of course. And let's select the E, and I'm gonna change that from light to extra bold. Okay, not extra bold, let's do semi-bold. There we go. And the color that I have this set to right now is a light green color, 28CA58. And I'm going to set that sucker to linear burn as well. And from here on, you can do whatever the heck you want. You can start adding in random splatters here and there. So maybe I'll add this little sucker. And let's just make it all nice and big. Maybe toss it in the corner, hit the check mark, set that to linear burn. And just start like messing with all these different paint splatters and see what you can get. It's a lot of uh, experimentation and you know things of that sort are kind of fun to do depending on oh I made a copy of that somehow. Let's delete that. And I made a copy of that as well. Interesting. So anyway, just kind of mess with all these different sets of watercolors here, and you you're bound to make something 
semi interesting. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so let's just start messing with some of these and scaling them up so that way they're not like dwarfed in comparison to the size of the canvas here. And so yeah, that's basically all there is to this. It's relatively straightforward, mostly because I'm explaining how to do it. I mean, <laughs> uh, Eli pointed something out to me just a little bit ago that makes complete sense. A lot of people, well not a lot, but there's a couple of people out there that like they egg me on to make more difficult tutorials. And what they fail to acknowledge is that the reason these tutorials are so easy at first glance is because I explain everything to the T. I mean, I literally explained every single step in this except for the masking part because masking is relatively simple and I've already made a tutorial on that in the past. But regardless, I teach you guys basically everything you need to know in every single tutorial, which is probably why they don't always seem too difficult, especially last week's tutorial with the 2013 text. I mean, who, how many of you would honestly have thought of that all by yourself? I mean, seriously. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, that's, that's enough for that. I, I mostly said that for, for Eli's behalf because he seemed kind of irritated that people were being so ungrateful, but... Either way, um, here we are, we're at the end of this tutorial. We've actually got a pretty good look going on here for the effect. Of course, I still think that the original looked a little bit better, but hey, what can you expect? I didn't really put a whole lot of time into this, but regardless, I hope you guys learned something interesting from this tutorial. If you need any of those download links that I mentioned, don't hesitate to ask. I'd be more than happy to give those to you in the link in the uh, description there. And if, again, if you have any questions or comments or anything of the sort, just let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. That's always fantastic. And uh, that's about all I've got for you guys today. So I hope you guys enjoyed your new year, and I will see you guys next Tuesday.